Hello everyone, welcome back to another video here on Play on GAA. Myself and Luke are recording this video in the aftermath of Porig Pierce's Connacht triumph over not more from Mayo. Porig Pierce is from Roscommon, winning their first ever Connacht Football Championship. Congratulations to them, and they are deserving winners in my opinion. I mean, story of the game, Luke, doesn't take a genius to see that the real stat that jumps out at you. Not more from Mayo, hitting 14 wides. Unbelievable when you consider that they get to a final, they hit 14 wides. With a conversion rate like that, in my opinion, you do not deserve to win the final. I mean, they got a lot of shots off, but the chances they missed, it was ridiculous that they missed those chances. Porrick Pierce is at the other end, very, very clinical. I mean, Paul Carey was on fire. He hit pretty much everything over the bar that came near him. Hubert Darcy as well scored a lovely point, was dropped over the bar. Ronan Daly hit probably the most, one of the most impressive points by a centre half back that I've seen over the last few years. Just drove up the pitch with it. Pierces were just more clinical, not more or more wasteful. That's pretty much the story of the game. What did you make of it yourself? I think you make a good point with uh, with the with the wides, like because when when especially when you look at that stage just after halftime in the 30 to 40 minute stage when the game was kind of there to be won not more it kind of pulled it back the game in halftime in touching distance to them after the black card and everything as well and that look that game was there for them and there was chances to get back to one point down to a chance to get back to two points down and there was just so many misses like you look kind of a chances that Charlie Burke missed, Darren McHale missed, even Aiden Orr missed as well. They were at like very, very easy chances. And look, you can't really legislate for that. And they all were probably filed under the under shots that you'd expect to convert. And uh, they just, yeah, they were, they were all taken from places within the scoring zone and everything as well. And they still couldn't execute it. So look, they know kind of themselves where they lost this game. And uh, yeah, but to... It's uh, to be fair to Park Pierces, I do think that they were an awful lot better. I thought they were probably uh, way, well, they were obviously way more efficient, and uh, they yeah, they just kind of seemed to be that bit more physical and better in the tackle and everything as well. They uh, and then yeah, hopefully they had the best forward on show and Paul Carey. That was uh, yeah, he kind of completely took over the game, and that was probably the difference was that Pierces had a player that was capable of doing that and scoring five from play, whereas Knockmore. Yeah, uh, Peter Norton did pretty well in corner forward, and Aiden Norm kicked a few nice points as well. But I think they were just Pierce's were just that little bit more impressive in their full forward line. Yeah, and while you mentioned Paul Carey, I mean, such a brilliant performance from him. He won man of the match. I mean, surely he has to get a call up to the Ross Common panel next year, no? Yeah, well, look, this is uh, that's to be honest, that's my first time properly watching them. I hadn't wasn't fully familiar. Obviously, the last couple of games you see watching back the highlights where he kicked the key goal the last day out and everything to get them to the final but uh against Mount Mel uh sorry Mount Bellew. so uh yeah I, I hadn't seen too much of him there but like based off kind of the performance that he put in in there in corner forward based off all the kind of the club games that we watched the weekend he was probably the most impressive inside forward so uh yeah, I, it'd be interesting to have a look kind of back on some of his previous games, how he's been getting on lately, because based off there in a game where there was plenty of county players in show, he looked like a level above everyone. So, uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see if he, if he is giving a look in uh, for for Ross Common because, uh, yeah, there's a few players, I think, that, there, obviously David Murray and the Daily, so I'll have experience there as well. And they all looked county players as well, but he just looked that level above. So, yeah, that's it'll be interesting. One. Yeah, without doubt. But one of the key moments in the game, I thought... There was a part of that game where Park Pierce's looked like they were going to cruise home. Kerry was hitting over everything that he got his hands on. Hubert, Hubert Darcy kicked his point at that stage. But then Knockmore got a couple of points in a row. And then Darren McHale obviously came on. And his shot for a point dropped short. And Charlie Burke got there before the goalkeeper and put it into the back of the net. Now, I think the goalkeeper should have came a bit more aggressively for that and taken command of the box. I think he was too passive. That's what allowed Burke to fist that into the net. But then immediately after that goal goes in, the water break is called and not more lost whatever momentum they could have got from that goal, in my opinion. And the two quick fire points from Carey and Emma Kelly back to back in the last quarter, I think they were crucial for Pierce's to really put more space between themselves and not more. I mean, they won by two points and those back to back points 
made a huge difference to the mindset of the Knockmore players then because they were going for goal then instead of points right at the end. I mean, Aiden Orm shot right at the end. He went for goal. I mean, they maybe could have tried to get one more point and then one more play. I think those two points back to back by Kelly and Carey, I think along with the water break coming in just after the goal, I think they were the key moments in Park Pierce's favour. Yeah, absolutely. I think that uh, they, it was it, there was a kind of assumption that the shift that the momentum was kind of going to shift to knock more after that goal. But look, yeah, yeah, as you mentioned there, they kicked the points there to stretch the lead back at the four. And uh, there was always that kind of element I felt during the game though was that uh, that Pierce's were going to kind of keep uh, notching a few scores though, just to kind of keep them at arm's length. And I suppose that's kind of what happened throughout the whole day. Knock more, maybe got back to one. I think at one stage, but. Pierce is just like even from as soon as the penalty was awarded at the start, they just looked to be kind of uh, a little little level kind of ahead. And yeah, there was all that time with the black card. I think in the in the first half where uh, people thought maybe for a second that Knockmore were going to get their way back into it, but look, it was a professional job by Pierce's. And yeah, they had to overcome a bit of adversity, like the fact that Dar- Hubert Darcy had to go into. Uh, into goal for a while due to the black card. Uh, they managed to work their way around that and still come out with the win. Yeah, without a doubt. And I do feel like they are deserving winners of the Connacht Championship. But now that they are into the final four, obviously they are now coming up against Kilmuckle Croaks, who we have a video on them. If you haven't seen it, do check it out. Their victory over Nace. They'll be playing Croaks now in the All-Ireland semi-final. Do you give Pierce's any real chance? I mean, I know that they've played all their matches in provincial grounds, now moving up to Croke Park against Croaks, who do kind of suit the more open pitch and more kind of free-flowing football how much of a chance would you give Pierce's now well I would say though if if Croaks had Mannion I probably wouldn't give them much of a chance but like obviously that's a big loss for Kilmacud and uh, yeah so I suppose you, you, you'd you be brave enough to write Pierce's off but I just I do think that they're probably the weakest of the four provincial champions I think they've done really well in Connacht and stuff but a lot of their wins kind of if you look how they got over the line against Mount Belly the last day. It was nearly, it was all played in kind of tough conditions. The ground was very heavy and all the thing, even in Ballina for the game today, very heavy pitch and stuff where it's a lot of balls carried into contact. And that's really where Pierce's kind of strength is, like with the likes of the dailies in there as well, that they kind of relish that contact and people carrying ball into them. And I just think in a wide open Croke Park where the conditions are really, really good, where I think, Crokes will be able to kind of stretch the play and based off what they did to Nace, even without Mannion, I think I might be it might be a kind of similar enough uh, situation to that. Obviously, Pierce's are an awful lot better team than Nace, but I would probably lean Crokes, I'd say, by two or three points based off that. But look, it's been a superb year for Pierce's and they've ground out kind of every game in Connacht here. They've had to do it all the hard way, really. They've had to, they've had tough games the whole way. So uh, yeah, I use that grit, it'd be hard to write them off, but uh yeah, I, I'll be I'll be leaning towards Croaks for the next round, I'd say. Yeah, well, one thing's for sure. It'll be fascinating to see how it does turn out. So, guys, that is myself and Luke's match review of the Connacht Club Football Final for 2021-22, a game in which Parig Pierce's win their first ever Connacht Club Championship. They won by a goal and 13 to knock more a goal and 11. Congratulations to Pierce's. And don't forget to look at all our other videos on the channel. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. And until the next video, guys, take care.